Exomoons have been sought after ever since we first started finding planets outside the solar system. Our system has nearly 300 known moons, and each of them are unique. Planets outside the solar system should have a similar diversity of moons. And we found several candidates. Sodium clouds around the hot Jupiter Wasp 49b could indicate the existence of a volcanic moon similar to Io. There's controversial evidence for large ice giant sized moons around planets like Kepler 1625b based on transit timing variations, though this has recently been disfavored and is considered unlikely. There are ongoing searches for moons around the gas giant Kepler 167e by Cool Worlds, which is another channel you might have heard of. There's even slight hints of a moon around the iconic exoplanet HD 189733b. But so far, as of the time of making this video in early 2025, nothing has been confirmed. But recently, yet another candidate has been found, and it's around a planet I've talked about before, Beta Pictoris b. Beta Pictoris is a large star about 75% more mass than the Sun in the constellation Pictor that's visible without a telescope. It's extremely young at just 23 million years old, meaning it's still in the process of forming. In fact, it's still in the cluster of stars it was born in, the Beta Pictoris moving group. This is a group of a few dozen stars that are all moving in the same direction and are the same age, including other systems you may have heard of like AU Microscopii. In 2008 and 2019, two planets were found to exist in Beta Pictoris, both gas giants each over 10 times more massive than Jupiter. Beta Pictoris b, the larger of the two at about 11.7 Jupiter masses, is a similar distance from its star Saturn is from the Sun, while c is between Mars and Jupiter. B takes about 23.5 years to make a full orbit, a video of which was made recently. But Beta Pictoris b was more than just some young gas giant around a large star. This system and this planet were unique. Beta Pictoris was the first system where evidence was found for comets outside the solar system, and Beta Pictoris b had its atmosphere pretty extensively studied. In fact, due to measurements of carbon monoxide in its atmosphere, its day length was able to be determined. Beta Pictoris b is a day that lasts between 7 and 9 hours, making it currently the fastest rotating planet known. It's also one of the very few planets outside the solar system with an hypothesized day length, the only other one I can think of being HD 80606b, though there may be others I've missed. However, this day length still isn't entirely confirmed, it's only been inferred based on shifting concentrations of carbon monoxide in its atmosphere as it rotates, so it might not be entirely accurate. Because it's so young, this planet hasn't yet had time to cool down from its formation. So, despite receiving just 11% the light Earth receives from the Sun, its temperature is around 2,650 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,450 Celsius. It'll cool down as it ages. This large temperature also helps puff out its atmosphere and increase its radius, which is about 1.46 Jupiter radii. But until recently, that was all we really knew about this planet until a recent 2024 study came out, suggesting possible evidence that Beta Pictoris b has a large moon. All planets have some amount of obliquity, or axial tilt. Earth is tilted at about 23 degrees, which causes the season, and so has an obliquity of 23 degrees. Jupiter's obliquity is just 3 degrees, meaning it pretty much has no seasons at all, and Uranus's is 97 degrees, meaning it's essentially rolling on its side. Obliquity can be changed in several ways. For one, a collision can knock a planet over. That might be what happened to Uranus. The gravitational interactions of other objects can also change it. The moon influences Earth's axial tilt, and Titan's gradual migration away from Saturn will eventually cause Saturn to flip on its side in a few 10 billion years, which I talk about in my video called The Far Future of Saturn. This recent study found that Beta Pictoris b likely has a non-zero obliquity. That was calculated based on several simulations of the planet and actual observations, which, though not confirmed yet, suggests that Beta Pictoris b has some kind of axial tilt, though they aren't sure how much. This isn't terribly surprising, every planet in the solar system is tilted at least a little bit. But what's more interesting is what could have possibly caused this. If Beta Pictoris b has a faster day length, more than 30% of the planet's breakup velocity, the point at which its own rotation would tear the planet apart, then a high axial tilt is almost guaranteed. If it spins slightly slower, at about 20% breakup velocity, then a smaller obliquity of around 10 to 20 degrees is possible, though a much higher one, potentially as much as 60 degrees, is likely. For the 30% or higher number, a high obliquity like 60 degrees is the only possible scenario. Even if it spins much slower than this, some sort of large tilt is possible. For reference, 20% breakup velocity translates to a day length of about 9.9 .9 hours. Based on previous measurements, it's been suggested that this planet's day length is between 7.9 and 9.5 hours. So based on what little we do know, the fast rotating high tilt scenario seems to be decently likely. 
To confirm which scenario is true, Beta Pictoris B will be observed by James Webb in the near future, in the first obliquity measurements of a planet in a multi-planetary system. Until then, this is all we know for right now. Which now begs the question of what caused this high obliquity should it exist. There are two main scenarios for this to happen. The first is a planetary collision, the Uranus scenario. A high tilt can be explained by a larger object crashing into Beta Pictoris B in the past, pushing it over. Remember, this system is young and is still surrounded by a debris disk where planets are forming. Planets hitting each other are more than possible. However, collisions on this scale are rare, and the study calculates that a collision with Beta Pictoris B in its current orbit is particularly unlikely, and a very highly specific set of circumstances would have to happen to make a collision possible. Because of this, a collision causing this planet's high tilt is considered unlikely, though remains a possibility. The second way for tilts to increase are spin-orbit resonances. Essentially, two objects can pull on one another, influencing the tilts of the other. For example, Saturn's tilt is currently about 27 degrees, but this can be explained in a way you might not expect, interactions with Neptune. Based on where Saturn and Neptune are in the solar system, Neptune is capable of influencing Saturn's obliquity, which could explain its 27 degree tilt. Point is, even objects billions of miles apart can do this. However, as far as we're aware, there are only two large planets in Beta Pictoris, B and C. Also, for this to happen, the planets would have to have very specific orbits in comparison to one another. A far more likely culprit for Beta Pictoris B's tilt is a moon. This study finds that a large exomoon around Beta Pictoris B, with an orbital period between 20 and 50 days, could explain the planet's obliquity. And most excitingly, if this planet has a large tilt of around 60 degrees, this moon must be around the size of Neptune, or about 15 times more massive than Earth. Of course, we've found candidate moons of this size before, mainly around Kepler-1625b and Kepler-1708b. However, recent studies have come out and said these moons around these planets most likely don't exist. So Beta Pictoris b is even more exciting. It's almost 12 times more massive than Jupiter, so a moon of this size, while surprising, isn't entirely impossible. Bigger planets tend to have bigger moons. This is seen in the solar system, Jupiter's moons are the largest, followed by Saturn's. Earth and Neptune are the exceptions here. Earth got its moon from a collision, and Triton is a captured dwarf planet. But generally, the bigger the planet, the bigger the moons, and Beta Pictoris b is a big planet. I should emphasize here that this moon is not confirmed to exist. It's only one explanation for Beta Pictoris b's high axial tilt, which itself is still not confirmed to actually be there. And even if it is, a fine-tuned planetary collision could also explain it, so there's a chance this moon does not exist. Right now, it remains a highly theoretical candidate, with no proof of its existence, but also nothing outright disproving it. But if it is confirmed to exist, it means several important things. It shows that moons the size of ice giants can exist around very large planets. So, smaller moons must also be able to exist. Most excitingly, this means these planets should very easily be able to host moons the size of Earth. What does that mean for planets like Majority, a 10 Jupiter mass planet in the habitable zone of its star? What does this mean for the chances for Majority and planets like it to host habitable Earth sized moons? Also, this method of detecting exomoons isn't limited to Beta Pictoris b. There's nothing stopping us from using it on other planets as well. So, other moons could very well be detected in this way using their planet's obliquities. To be honest, I find it interesting just how many different ways there are for potentially detecting exomoons, and how they reveal wildly different environments for the moons and their planets. For WASP-49b, its unconfirmed candidate moon was found to the strange presence of sodium surrounding the planet, which could be explained by volcanoes erupting from a molten Io-like moon. You wouldn't be able to find an ice giant-sized moon with that. And similarly, smaller moons could have smaller effects on their planet's obliquities, meaning larger moons are easier to find using the obliquity method. But no matter what, it's clear that after many years, we are finally closing in on the first confirmation of a moon outside of our solar system. It's a race, and we'll have to see which planet will be there first. Will it be Kepler-167e, the Jupiter analog that's current being analyzed for transits of moons? Will it be WASP-49b with its sodium clouds? Or will it be Beta Pictoris b with its unconfirmed high obliquity? Or will it be somewhere completely unexpected? No matter which planet it is, we're in the home stretch now. I will be very surprised if we don't confirm at least one of these moons in the next few years. Speaking of which, how could Beta Pictoris b's moon be confirmed, assuming it exists? Firstly, James Webb is going to observe Beta Pictoris b to look for proof of a high obliquity. If it's found, then that's immediately strong evidence in favor of a moon, but also in favor of a planetary collision. Also, we're seeing this planet's orbit edge on. 
because moons tend to orbit on their planet's equators, we can see Beta Pictoris B's equator, and that opens up the possibility for this moon to transit. So there is a chance for us to directly see this moon pass in front of Beta Pictoris B, which could in theory be detectable. But again, we'll just have to wait. So anyways, we're getting closer and closer to our first exit moon. This race is going to have to have a winner, and it will be decided soon. I'd personally consider Kepler-167e, Wasp-49b, and Beta Pictoris b to be the most likely to win, which is why I've been mentioning them so much. But I don't know which one is going to win. But what we do know is the opportunity to study moons outside the solar system is about to become a reality, and it's going to be exciting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.